Hey guys, welcome to part 4 of my uh, Z80 build and uh, in this part we're gonna cover some basic input output uh, we're gonna see how we uh, input uh, data directly to the data bus and how we output data from uh, the data bus to, um, to an external device like this uh, 16 by 2 uh, LCD and we're gonna cover all that in this video in the first parts I've dealt with the CPU, the ROM and the RAM and then we've connected them together and watched some uh, uh, basic instructions uh, being carried out and how everything operates. But up until now um, we can't input any values to our system or output them. We can only see what happens through these uh, LEDs which are, which are directly uh, hardwired uh, to the address bus and to the data bus and now we're gonna um, expand the build a bit so that we can output values to the LCD and we will get a more uh, clear uh, result and how we input values uh, into the data bus I'm still not covering a keyboard or like an like a input device because for that we need to use a bit uh, uh, more higher speeds to get such a device to work but hopefully in the next part I will have some sort of a keyboard or basic input uh, device ready so that I can also demonstrate that. Um, to go to this circuit um, right now we're dealing uh, with, um, uh, with this uh, part right here you can see this uh, this section which is the general uh, input output it uh, outputs all values on address uh, FF here we have our output and you can see we have here the LCD connected uh, this section right here only controls the uh, LED backlight for the for the LCD and here we have just our general input which we'll take 8-bit uh, uh, values, just a byte, and directly place it on the data bus. If you're looking for the uh, schematics for this build, again, look at the description, all the information is there. So let's start, like always, uh, by having a look at the breadboard. And if you're going to see some cuts in this video, that's because I have a serious cold going on, and I need to blow my nose every two minutes, but hopefully it will be okay. So our breadboard here um, we have the address bus but I'm only using the lower 8 bits of it because that's the lower 8 bits uh, that's the part that deals with uh, addressing the input output device and we have the data bus and uh, again it's just 8 bit uh, data bus we have um, pull, uh, pull down resistors on the address bus and on the data bus right here we have uh, the uh, 8 uh, times NAND which um, um, it's just a, a, a sort of mechanical way of um, deciding when we can operate with address FF so when we're addressing uh, address FF this, uh, this uh, uh, 8 gate here will, uh, will enable the whole circuit and uh, when we have any other address than FF then this entire circuit is disabled here we have um, uh, the LS138 line decoder uh, it decides which one of the input or outputs we're addressing to right now we only deal with these two here you can see the dedicated ones for the keyboard we don't, uh, we don't have them yet we're only dealing with these two, the input and output. We have uh, here two uh, latches, one for the input and one for the output again. The LEDs, uh, you know these ones, we have the address bus starting from A0 to A15. And we have the data bus also starting from D0 to D8. Um, the dip switches, they are just again used so that I can manually place values on the address bus with these I can manually place values on the data bus and with these I can manually place values on the on the input um, device 
and I have three buttons which uh, represent the lines coming from the CPU, the operation lines. We have the input output request, so this line uh, will go low when every time when the computer requests for an input or an output. And we have a read and a write. Write means that we are writing uh, an external value into the data bus. Read means that we are reading from the data bus and we are outputting it to an external device. And uh, all the rest that you see here, I have here a, a 12 to 5 voltage regulator, the voltage input 12 volt supply. Uh, we have LEDs to indicate when uh, this circuit is in operation and when we're addressing either input or output. And uh, for the rest, pull down and pull up resistors and some decoupling capacitors and that's about it. Um, again for the schematics and everything go to the description all the information is in there. So let's uh, let's start first of all with some basic uh, with some basic input. I'm going to turn the circuit on. Right now you see that uh, this uh, LCD turned on it's not initialized we haven't sent any sort of commands to it yet it's going to stay like this. We have the input and uh, the output and input LEDs. They are both uh, on, they are both high. We also have this LED which is high. So everything here indicates that nothing in the circuit is currently operational. The address bus is all low, the data bus is all low. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, address our input output device and we're doing that by addressing address FF. So I'm going to raise all the bits on the address bus just manually. Like that. And right now you can see that this LED went off. That means that our circuit is operational. We have FF on the address bus. Normally when the CPU is connected we will, uh, and we're, we're carrying out um, uh, input output, then we're gonna see the um, address of the output device or input device coming on the lower bits of the address bus and the value itself coming on the higher bits of the address bus. So the higher bits are sort of irrelevant to us right now, we're only using the lower bits. And let's start off just by um, carrying out some basic input. Say that I want to input the value uh, 1. So if we look at the uh, circuit here, this is our input. And you can imagine, for example, that we have some sort of a memory device connected to it. And we need to get values from the memory device directly into our system. The memory device would give a 1. It would set a 1. And then uh, we will carry out um, a read. So First of all, there will be an uh, input-output request and then the right line is going to go high and you can see that the value from uh, the input uh, is now sitting on the data bus. Once I release it, it's gone. It's, going, uh, it's gone from the data bus, but the CPU uh, has internal mechanisms that ensure that this command will be read and a few... Um, microseconds later the lines will go lower and uh, it will free the data bus again. That's pretty much how it goes for uh, just general input. Um, I can just put another value like this and you can see now the value is sitting on the data bus. Not a lot to, uh, to it but uh, this is how our input method works, our general input. Again this is not how um, a keyboard will work, well it will work in the same principle, but uh, um, a keyboard, what the CPU will do to get values from, from a keyboard, um, to get input from a keyboard, it will just multiplex through this whole series of lines that you see right here, and then it will wait for an input each time, and it will carry it out real fast, so um, even if you think that you can type really really fast by the time that you hit one key the computer has already cycled uh, numerous times through all the possible combinations of a key that can be pressed 
and that's how a keyboard works but for that again we need to use a bit higher speeds and definitely not uh, a static example like this so um, that sort of covered uh, the input um, we're gonna have a look at a more a more detailed example for um, for output you can see I have this uh, LCD screen right here it's not initialized we uh, carry out the the output in the same way that we do the input we would place a value on the data bus we will then make an input output request or the CPU will uh, will make it and then also a read a request and the value from the data bus will be, will be read by this uh, transparent latch and it will latch it and then it will hold the value and here we can see the outputs um, for uh, for this device so to demonstrate this I have um, a few uh, a set of instructions that I'm gonna carry through let's just see that we can uh, we can see everything Winter is coming and uh, the weather here is changing and I have this cold so every two minutes I need to blow my nose and sneeze and it's not really nice but in any case um, you can see here let's see yeah we have everything in, in shot so these are the list of uh, instructions that I'm going to go through and uh, they are described in the data sheet for the for the HD um, uh, 77480 standard interface and you can read it all, all there how to use it, how to initialize it into different modes um, the different characters, which codes you need to have uh, and everything so you can just download uh, and read it but um, we're going to carry through these uh, set of instructions and eventually you're going to see a character appearing right here so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to initialize this LCD to a 4-bit mode. Um, you can see here, I don't know if it's that clear on the camera, but uh, we have the 8 bits. I just use this standard template that I have. The 8 bits uh, on the LCD, they correspond to bit 4, 5, 6 and 7. We have the enable and we have the uh, register select either we are uh, talking to uh, either we are giving out an instruction or either we are giving out data for one of the characters these are the only six bits that we uh, we need to use so let's start off first of all by initializing the LCD I will uh, input the first line by the way uh, my uh, inputs here they are reversed so you can see the data starts from here, D0, but on my uh, uh, dip switches it just starts from this point because the numbers are arranged that way. So um, I'm going to set uh, bit number 2 to high and also bit number 5 which is the enable bit to high and then I'm going to make an input output request and I'm going to read it. And now you can see it latched and I released it. It's still sitting on the on the latch itself, and uh, it's connected to the uh, to the display. The display, by the way, I'm not going to go too much into how it works, but it basically um, reads. Uh, uh, it has an internal delay. It reads every time the values that come on this uh, on this bus here, and it will update itself accordingly. So uh, we've inputted the, the first line. The next line will be to lower the enable. And again, make a request, and you can see that we initialized it. And yeah, everything comes up on the camera, so that's good. Next, uh, we will initialize the number of lines that we want to use and the type of font that we want to use. And it's the same command because we're not changing anything of the default values. So uh, this time, uh, we are setting... Um, the the enable the high the first time we're making an input output request we're reading it we're transferring it next we need a zero so we leave the enable uh, a bit uh, high we lower uh, the second bit we again make an input output request and we're reading it and to uh, finalize it all we lower the enable 
and we carried out this instruction. There is nothing here to see, it just does it internally. Next we're going to turn the cursor uh, of the display on. So once we finish these three lines right here, you will see the uh, cursor appearing. So first of all, again, we start off by enabling. It's not something that I made up. Again, read the data sheet for this uh, device and you will understand exactly how it works. So I've uh, set the enable uh, line to high, everything, all four bits are zeros. Request, read, move it to here. Next line, um, again, it's a command. We leave the enable high and uh, we set bit number uh, 5, 6 and 7 to high. Request, read, we move it here and eventually to finalize it all we just lower everything including the enabled and we make a request and there we have the cursor appearing on our display we carried out these three lines and uh, they are responsible for the cursor you can turn it on off you can uh, change its mode to a block to a blinking block to a blinking line it's all explained in the datasheet next uh, we will set the higher bits for the letter that uh, we're going to put in um, i've chosen the letter x just because I felt like it. The first value uh, we're going to place it in. We have again the enabled on high. We make an input output request. We read it. We latch it and it goes into there. Again we will lower the enabled to finalize this uh, instruction. And now we've uh, chosen uh, the column for the for the letter you can see here from the data sheet uh, we have the higher bits and the lower bits and we want the letter x so we've inputted this value uh, right here into the which is five uh, by the way into the higher bits and we're going to put the value um, eight into the lower bits but we're going to uh, put the value eight and this time we're also going to address data so right now I'm setting this instruction in but I'm also addressing the data line. I'm making a request, I'm reading it, I'm writing, it latches, it goes into the LCD and again we lower it to finalize it and we get eventually an X written. If we want to write another letter, we don't need to carry out all these instructions. We just repeat uh, these two final um, sets right here by just setting the higher bits again and then the lower bits. If we uh, choose a letter here, let's, uh, let's choose, I don't know, the letter A maybe. We'll choose the letter A, so we need to put 4 in the higher bits. So let's... Uh, Let's do that. We're going to set the enable to high. We're going to put the value 4. We're going to make a request, latch it, lower everything. Again, request, latch it. And uh, then for the lower bits, we need uh, the value 1. So we're going to now address the data line. And we're going to set also the enable on high and we're going to set the value 1. And now we're going to again make a request, latch it, and then again lower everything to finalize the command. And we get the letter A. So that's how uh, input output carries, uh, is being carried out for this uh, specific LCD, which is going to be the starting point. It's a good, uh, it's a good place to start. It can give clear data here, it can also scroll, it can, we, we can do a lot of things with it and it's much easier than uh, going about uh, developing a, a VGA display. Um, that's, uh, that was it. In the next uh, video, well, basically what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take this entire setup, I'm going to uh, add it to the permanent breadboard for the computer build and in the next part, we're going to maybe have a look at some program that uh, will initialize everything. 
and it will give us an output on the display so that we know that everything was carried out correctly and if I have the time which I really don't don't have much uh, recently I do everything on the weekends um, I'm also gonna uh, invest some time in making a basic input output device maybe something with just a keypad or um, a few letters a few numbers that we can uh, play around with but uh, that was it that was the tutorial for uh, basic input output again look if you're looking for the schematics if you're looking for the previous videos there is a playlist and in the description you will find all the information that you need I hope you liked it uh, if you like it, please consider subscribing if you haven't done that already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.